but there still uh, is an unmet need for patients in the second line, third line, fourth line setting. All right. In that context, with these multiple TKIs being approved and available in the clinic, it's, it's a phenomenal time when we can think about how do we sequence these drugs and how do we combine these drugs so that we can offer the right treatment to the right patient at the right time, right? So in this context, you know, Tivozantinib, the phase three study, right, uh, that was published in uh, Lancet Oncology uh, by Brini and Monty and colleagues, um, you know, come into play. So as we know that uh, the TIVO one study that was uh, initially published uh, showed uh, TIVO's antinib was approved in the first line setting in Europe. And in the US, you know, I think because of so many other drugs, that was not the case. And interestingly, this uh, uh, phase three TIVO, TIVO study is one of the first studies, a phase three study that was randomized uh, with sorafenib that reported a VEGF TKI in post immunotherapy patients in the third line and, and in the third line and beyond setting. Again, that's why this study is significant because it shows that VEGF is still active and a VEGF with a longer half life is still active in the relapsed refractory space. And again, we will see, um, we will see the long term follow up data. And again, this is all the more exciting for us to be in the space on how, how do we sequence um, uh, these therapies. And that's, um, you know, that's how Tuvo's antinib is, um, uh, becomes important in the relapsed refractory setting. 